Hi, so whilst I'm waiting for my encoder to come for the encoder project, I thought I'd start another. Um, something I've always really wanted to do is get this uh, filter from the original Music from Outer Space Sound Lab because it's really basic. It doesn't even have op amps, it just uses the. Let me get a good pointer. It just uses the OTAs. From an LM13700, there's a fil there's a two capacitor filters, and that's it. It's very simple. I'd quite like to see if um, to build it into a Eurorack module. It's um, it's only six decibels an octave, and um, it has really strange resonance. Almost sounds like chaos. Like a weird sort of squealy resonance, and I seem to remember that resonance has a funny harmonic sound to it. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but I wanted to build it first on a breadboard, which is here. But I just got incredibly frustrated with it because I chose one that was too small. Um, so I decided instead to just build a little module here, just so I can experiment with it. I've got the two pots cut off and um, resonance, uh, there's W input, a CV control for cut off and then a band pass and a low pass output. If you see here, this is the page it's from, can't really see because it's quite, it's the old website, this is one of the first synths I ever built. He did uh, the Sound Lab Ultimate and the Sound Lab Mark II, but I just loved how simple this was. Um, supposedly, according to his description, let's just get this back to full size. Might just show only this frame. Supposedly, uh, LFO. The two, these two circuits. Sorry, just a moment. Um, apparently, these two circuits are straight out of the National um, Operational Amplifiers data book. That'd be interesting to find. I feel like it's the same as what's on the LM one three seven hundred. Look at application information, examples. There's an example VCF, which calls the two pole Butterworth low pass filter. It's quite similar. The difference is. Um, Some of the feedback has changed, and there's positive feedback as well, which gives, I think, gives the resonance. Shall we try and find the, I can try and see if I can find the national. If we go to the, believe it or not, I think it has a Wikipedia page. Yeah. Look, uh, no, but we could use the Internet Archive. Okay, it's text, all texts. Bet you if we search. Hmm. 
Yeah, he says the National Operational Amplifiers Data Book Data Sheet. So it's probably just this. If we find, if we just search for. I think it's just the same just a data sheet. I don't know if it tells us any more. Annoyingly, this is quite hard to look at for this squished down window. I think it is just essentially this. Now I've printed off the data. I've printed off the um, diagram of this board, um, and you can see it side by side with the design. You can see there's a lot of similarities. The main there's the so the the I've I've left. One input, which is just noise input, comes through a comes through a much larger input resistor. Um, there's a one k to ground, and then there's two feedback resistors, but it seems to have less feedback from the low pass output than the high pass, than the band pass output. And then from the band pass out, the, the, which doesn't exist in this one, there is a feedback, a negative, a positive feedback to the that side. So I'll build it. I might run out of time before the video ends to show you to complete it. So this might have to be a two-part video. Um, so this is how I tried to build it, and it was just so frustrating. There's just not enough space on this little perf board. I should have done it on a bigger one, but instead I decided to do it permanently so I can have a bit more structure to it. I'm using my uh, Clactronics um, mini breadboard power supply. You put 15 volts in and you get plus minus 12 volts, 5 volts and ground. Uh, and I've, put, I've got these four these headers here. So I can literally just push it in the top here. And I've put these uh, spaces on so I can just fill it like that. And it sits kind of flat. Now, it's quite handy. Let me just get a pen. just stick this down so it's always in view this is quite a handy way to decipher a circuit onto a board if you um, are struggling to stay where you're at and I'm going to use a highlighter to uh, do the bits I've done. So we'll start. It might make sense to start left to right, but actually, the best way to start is usually 
the interconnects between the chips. So if you look here, five connects to seven. So I just need to create some uh, hooks. That's one, two, three, four. So there's that. I'm actually more of a fan of strip boards than perf board, but perf board make, means I can make it quite compact. And the other one we're going to do is between 12 and 10. So it's 9, 9, 10, 11, 12. That. Solder them in on the back. Misplace my solder. Misplace my cutters. Now, because the pads are all separate, I have to bend them towards where. I want them to connect to you and then jump a little solder blob across. See how I'm joining up. To the chip. So, I've now done... Oops, that one's sticking out a bit, never mind. Seven to five. So that's this connection. Twelve to ten. So that's... Nine, ten... 11, 12. It's quite confusing this schematic because it looks, this looks like separate parts, but if you see closely, these numbers are all the pins that represent the pins on this package. Turn down the brightness to reduce the glare. I'm to turn it up actually. So, Next thing, maybe I want to put these. Well, I'm going to need the ground. So, I'm going to try and pull the power in. So, actually, as well, if you notice, these were actually, this was actually a 9 volt system, which means we might have to change some values, like on these pots. Uh, we might have too much range. So let me get the ground. Ground goes to thirteen on on the board, but it will also be going across all these jacks, and it'll be on the bottom of this pot and the, these. So I'll remove this. Now I need to pull ground down to. Say pin 13, so that's it's a 16 pin, 16, 15, 14, 13. It's interesting, it doesn't have the 1k as well. I need to understand more about OTAs 16, 15, 14.
ground is this one here, so hmm. should probably be doing this with a might do this with a a, sh a shrouded cable. So you have now connected ground down to there, but I need to get ground to all these jacks. So what I'll probably do stick across. A solid bar. Like that. get the ground down from here. See this is what I like about stripboard is the the wire It's subtractive rather than additive, so like all these are connected, and to disconnect them, you just drill one of the holes out. Whereas this, you have to create a solder tab across, so it's additive instead. Cut this kind of long, do it down to here, put it through, nice and tight. Now I won't cross anything off because that's I was just literally setting up the power to come in the ground and then I should put in the plus I'll do red. Do red for maybe I'll do blue. Blue for minus twelve and red for plus twelve. So 
plus twelves there. And that goes to pin eleven. So that's nine, ten, eleven. goes in between those pins that we joined up. Stranded wire. That and then minus twelve. It's basically on the opposite side it's six, so it's comes from here. That goes to there. I actually have wire strippers, but I seem to be just using my cutters. Won't be using, um, don't think I'll be using five volts with the circuit. That, so that is basically that, that done. Now there's a lot of parts that go to ground. The one case that goes to ground. I might try and make a rail across the top. Um, so all the capacitors and resistors can just go straight. So I'll do it underneath. There's not a lot of need for a positive and negative rail. But of course, as always, a lot of need for ground common because that's how circuits work needs to be a return path the plus minus is only really needed for oh I should have brought the black there but I can doesn't really matter Connected by just putting it there. So you see it connects. Here. 
and it connects. Here. So you see now the, the ground comes down here and it goes back up to this line here. Now, still I haven't done anything, but now we want to put these two capacitors in. So they're 560 picoferrets, which is 561. I have them on this board already. Be seen. That's my finger. Ah, four seven one. Oh, I don't have five six one. I'm gonna use four seven ones. I think that might be all right. It means it's slightly the tuning will be slightly different than the original one. I think it's fine as long as them they're the same as each other. Famous last words. Now they go from that joined together to ground. Ah, so here. Ground straight away. Horrible feeling this is going to get really messy. Ideally when you're doing one of these you should lay it out in advance but then it's a bit like doing a PCB and you're like you might sort of have designed a PCB it kind of defeats the whole point the purpose is to purpose is to test something or prove something Try and bridge that. It's kind of quite hard to bridge. So I'll just put a wire in instead. that so what is it that's this connection can it's ground because this is between 10 and 12 which is that one so that means this bit's done now we need the other capacitor this one might be trickier so we need to go from this loop here to ground need to stretch up. It's going to fit. Bend the legs like this. See how I've bent them. It means it stretches across. Because it's perf board it's best to try and get it as close as possible to where it needs to go. So you don't have to do huge runs of huge track runs underneath. So this is the main filtering part of the circuit because these, these are the OTAs act as resistors and these capacitors act as um, capacitors are capacitors. So it's basically an RC filter and they can change their values, which in turn changes the cutoff basically. That's them done. Now let's do the 20k that goes between 8 and 14. So 20k is black, is red, black, black, red. Is it red? That would be red. Draw a bit of paper. Let's 
20k be this look so it's red for two black black and then red for two zeros so that's 20k 20,000 ohms or 20k I should have them here already ah there's one there Should be two. Other. Oh, now we're going between eight and fourteen. They're on the same side. No, they're not. They're on opposite sides. Cause this one's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's kind of a strange. What can we do? Might have to do a wire. There's a lot coming from 8. It's only two things coming from 14, so it's best to start at 14. 16, 15, 14. We could start. We could try and stick it in here. Fifteen, what's fifteen used for? Fifteen is unused. So I'll just stick it going across to fifteen. Because I'm not going to put anything in fifteen. Sort those in. And we want to put it on eight, which would be the lower one. Now we need to work out how to get from there to down here. I think I'm just going to use a wire. Had a yellow one here somewhere. I'll have to get it again. This is just as fiddly, really. The only thing is, is once you've soldered it, it, you know it's a bit more sturdy. Okay, there we go. Just bends over the lead a bit. I don't know if you can see that, see if... Getting them to almost touch. Can't see it. Wait. Here it is. Making them almost touch like that. have to remember to solder them otherwise you'll otherwise you forget and that'll be hours of troubleshooting so I need to try and get this wire to go down perhaps where's it got to go again? 8 maybe I've made it a little bit too. Oh, why don't I get my real work out of
Okay. So now that is eight into a resistor into 14. So that's eight into the 20k resistor, 14. Oh, and I've done 13, haven't I? So I'm basically filling up the main center. Now I need, I think I'll do these 1k resistors, just get them out of the way. 1k is brown black black brown which is 1000 basically so we're going from 14 which is where we just were to ground ah it's here Fourteen. This one should be soldered. Cut. Be good to find a lighting solution where shine doesn't make it look so hard harsh because if you look it's quite metallic so yeah uh, so that's 14 to 1k resistor to ground on 14 then we need 1k resistor to ground on 4 One. Oh no, that's two K. Not two K. This looks right. One. One. Oh, oh one. Yep. Yeah. Just get to ground on four. See how useful this rail is coming that I've built. I'm probably going to run out of time, so there won't be enough time to. Playback a sample. Do a sound sample. I might not even finish the design. So that's that one. Any more one Ks? Well, there's, yeah, there's another one K going from three. basically next to what we just did. I hope this is boring you suitably.
Wait, let me check. Yep, so that goes to three. So that's three to ground. So that's this one here. What I've cut off here was just more of these. I left the noise example, but there were two oscillators coming in here through 150k. So that's actually the main path done. Apart from these 20k's here, you see, these are actually the emitter resistors for the, uh, because they're set up like this. So it's like set up as a common common collector amplifier. Oh. So it needs this resistor because it varies the current through this resistor to get an output. So that's these ones that I took out already, I think. Yeah. I think that's 20k. Looks like brown, doesn't it? Maybe that's 2k. Is there 2k in the schematic? No. That's worrying. That doesn't look like 220k. I can get more 20k's. It's the thing about resistor colours, they're not always very clear. Yeah, supposedly that's 2k. If you get a mold, if you're ever unsure, you can just do this. Twenty K. Oh, it's going out of range. Have to put it on two mega ohms. Hmm. I'm messing around now. Can just hold them like this. Yeah, see. No, that is 2k. Uh oh. Now, what's it doing? I don't know what's up with my multimeter. I've got another one here that's out of shot. Maybe my multimeter might need new batteries. I've got a bench one here, and I'm just going to test it. Yeah, 20 kilo ohms. I'm not sure what's going on with this. Okay, 20k is on the emitters. So that's pin 9. Pin 9 and pin 8, so it's basically the ones on the bottom. We can get that earth rail at the bottom. See, I'm putting it downward to touch the ground on the jack. So we've got two earth rails, one up there and one down there. When I say earth rails, it can be quite confusing. What you mean is just common return rails. They're the most negative terminal on a battery normally. Or the negative terminal on a power supply. It's where everything returns. All the the, the circuit completing part.
you wouldn't have a circuit if you didn't have ground. Ground's confusing because it sounds like um, the earth fault or the power system. So there's 20k to that earth. Oh, I've run out of time. I've only got five minutes left. Um, I'll probably start this video again tonight and then combine them together into a single episode. But anyway, I just did that. Oh no! My first mistake. I did it to ground, but it's meant to be going to negative. Negative. Because our signal is positive and minus so it's with a transistor like that you need to be below ground damn it alright so I'll have to come back and repair that later a uh, few hours I'll be back bye